I think I'm live. Hey, everybody. Well, oops, kicking my camera. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Little John Sharns. I'm Alicia. Let's see who's here today. As I usually do, I like to ask people exactly where are you from and what time is it? Right now, I am uh, in Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh, and it's two o'clock. And it's a pretty dreary day, but it's not too bad because it's been hot over the past couple like days. So it's nice to have a nice cool temperature. Let's see who's here in the chat. We have, oh, TDSM19, she's here from Iowa. Hi, Deanna, and uh, Reggie J. Hook Crochet. Oh, Reggie just had a birthday yesterday. So everybody wish uh, J. Hook Crochet happy birthday. And a good way to wishing her happy birthday is going over to her YouTube channel, just in case you don't know, she has her own channel and subscribing. All right, let's see who else is here. We have Brittany. She says hello from Nebraska. So what we're here for today, we are going to be talking about 12 crochet shawls. Just a forewarning, myself personally, I am not like a professional crochet shawl creator. I've probably only made two crochet shawls in my whole entire life. Not because I don't like them. When I did custom orders, not too many people order them. And the ones that I did were more kind of like the scarf kind of shawls. So in this like live stream, we're going to be working back and forth off of each other. I'm going to be asking you some questions and you're going to be helping me out. But before we get into all that, as usual, I have all my notes. Anybody that donated via Super Chat on my very last live stream, my last live stream was with Shanna Givens wonderful, wonderful, wonderful crochet designer. She does graph gans, but she offered a free graph gan. Actually, she's given out more than that five to anybody that donated via Super Chat. I tried to contact a lot of you. It was more difficult than when I thought. So if you did donate via Super Chat, please email me at littlejohnyarns at gmail.com. My um, email address is down in the description box. Email me so I can send you these uh, free graphs that she offered. They're excellent. All right, so where else? Uh, and also, I wanted to mention somebody I forgot to mention last week was Lisa Bowman. She sent me happy mail via my email. You guys got that. She made her very first sale. So I wanted to congratulate her that on doing that, on being a crochet entrepreneur and making your first sale. So cheers to you. All right. So let me tell you how this whole 12 pattern setup is going to go. I want to ask you uh, a question right before I show you these three patterns. So I want you to think about your question and put it in the comments. And then I'll show you some patterns. And after those three patterns, we'll come back to all of your answers. I hope that makes sense. So before we hop in, let's see. One of my first questions is for you guys. What weight yarn do you like to crochet with when you create a shawl? When I've created shawls, I've only done it in worsted weight yarn because it was a customer order. That's exactly what they asked for. So when you write your um, answer down, can you put like uh, maybe three question marks before it so I can know that you're putting out your answer so I can bring it to the front and, you know, ask it to all you or respond to. You know what I'm talking about, but we'll get to that. So the very first pattern, rambling on, let me take you to my back screen. All right, this is perfect for any type of beginner. This lacy shawl looks kind of tricky, but you only need to know three stitches. If you can single crochet, double crochet, and chain stitch, that's it. There's no crazy shaping or sewing to it. And the great thing about this shawl right here, the yarn that's recommended for this shawl Coincidentally, it's the same yarn that I'm offering in my giveaway. Let me bring you back to me real quick. Uh oh, I can't pull myself back up. There I am. Oh, sorry about that. For that shawl, I didn't realize, but this is the same exact yarn that is used for that shawl pattern. So this yarn costs a total of $52. There were a total of five hanks of yarn of Cascade 2020 100% proving wool yarn. I found this yarn at the thrift store for $3.99. Uh, it was such a steal. It was hidden underneath some like Christmas decorations. So I had to grab it up and I felt like I was so lucky. But then I realized, you know what? 
you guys are always here watching me and supporting me. Why don't I just offer a giveaway? So you can also enter this giveaway. I've got the link for that video down below. You can get to it after the video or right now because I'll probably be talking for at least the next 45 minutes. So you can come right back to it. All right, let me get back into whoa, the patterns. All right, the next shawl we're going to look at is called the Summertime Wrap. If you want something a little bit more challenging, this Erie Wrap was designed as a stitch sampler, so you can add bunches of new stitches to your repertoire. But don't worry, it's not too complicated, and the pattern is rated easy. The designer of this pattern is called Mama Stitch. All right. The next pattern, this is called the Pineapple Peacock Shawl. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love the pineapple stitch. One of the uh, crochet designers that I like to follow, her name is Posh Banash uh, Crochet. She does a lot of work with this pineapple stitch. I think it is so gorgeous. But when you do these, you have to make sure you get your stitch count right because your pineapple will look a little, you know, wobbly. All right, in this pattern, they're using, what type of yarn are they using for this? Oh, 100% acrylic yarn. Does it say the weight of the yarn? You guys are looking with me for the first time. Here we go. I don't know, but let's bring it back to the screen with me. There we go. So we're going to go back to that very first question that I asked. But before we go back to that, the reason I have so many shawls patterns put together, I have a wonderful person that helps me out on my blog. Her name, her blog is Nine Inspired. I have to link her down in the description box below. But sometimes um, I get so busy trying to make patterns and talking to pattern testers and writing blog posts. She'll help me with roundups. And this is one of the roundups she came up with. And the roundup was so eclectic, full of like patterns for people with um, higher skill levels and beginner crocheters. And I thought to myself, I wanted to create these patterns too. But that's where the whole idea of this came from. It was from her. Check her out. All right. I babble well on and everything. But we're going to go back to that very first question I asked. So what weight yarn do you like to use when you crochet a shawl? All right. Let me scroll up. Um, here we go. I got somebody with a question mark. We have Gail. She says she uses finger weight yarn or sports yarn. Oh, I should have said, why do you prefer um, that weight yarn? Here we go. We have another one from Runaway Needle Red. The weight depends on the pattern and a draper one, but I use two, three, and four weight. To be honest, um, I've maybe used like a, a two weight or anything like a crochet written down below only for like jewelry. I've always been pretty intimidated of doing like thinner type of yarns. You know what I mean? Have any of you ever used the, uh, what is it? The Lion Brand Shaw Cake? I think more other companies make that also. But has anybody ever used any of that, of that before? I've never worked with it, but I've wanted to try it. I'm always intimidated by, intimidated by thinner yarns because, you know, I like myself a nice, quick uh, pattern. So I think when I'm working with thinner yarns, it might take longer. Is that true? Or what do you think about it? Let's see. Let's hop up. Here we go. Wendy says, I love three and four. I'm finishing a knitted shawl now. You know what? Like I said, three. Three and four, that's more in my comfort zone. I usually don't go anything much other lower than that, unless I'm making jewelry or something like that. Let me scroll down. Here we go. This isn't one of the questions, but Deanna says, ooh, I love the summertime. I love Mama and Stitch. Her instructions are so easy, easy to follow. You know what? I've never heard of her. I am probably should, like, research more, but... That's somebody I'm just going to write down in or not write down because I didn't bring my pen today. That's why I'm drinking. I drink too much. Maybe that makes me so forgetful. Oh, guys, if this is your first time here in this coffee cup is not tea. It is all wine. This is what gets me through my live stream. So if you're drinking on some wine or whatever your um, afternoon or morning, wherever you're at cap that you're having, what are you sipping on? OK. I'll read one more. And then 
I'll hop right back into it. Who is this? Zane. Zane or Zan? Finger and sport weights takes longer, but once you start, you get used to it. All right. Thank you very much for the tip. Let's hop back into the patterns. Where are we now? Oh, or for our next question. Uh oh, I can't. Oh. Who's that? Oh, blindness. This is creations. Hi, Alicia. I like to use Red Heart Super Saver. Um, we were still awake before. Okay, up. I keep. Okay, now I got it. So the next question: What is your favorite shape shawl to create? Because you know they have the triangle shawls, rectangle shawls. What type do you like to create, and why? Let's hop back in. So we did this one. Let me X them out before I get lost. Two and three. So we are on this one by uh, Nadia. This is called the Summer Shawl. Triangle shawls like this are very lovely. Like this very lovely ombre summer shawl are very versatile. You can wear them over your shoulders or keep you warm in the summer nights. Tie them around your waist to cover up your swimsuit or just tuck them around your neck as a scarf. This was uh, the designer of this scarf is Yarntopia. Yarntopia is another YouTuber. She's also a blogger that I fangirl over. Her patterns are so beautiful. She's absolutely gorgeous. So all of these informations, you don't have to worry about writing any of this down. I have a complete blog post with all of these uh, designers link in the description box. So don't think you have to write all these down and look for them yourself. I got them all written down. So the next one we're going to be looking at is the Deco Starburst, Starburst Shawl. Mm, tongue twister. Inspired by stunning stained glass windows, this spe spectacular shawl is made with finger and weight yarn for maximum drape and detail. What could be more summery than sunshine? If you're a visual learner, then you'll be happy to note that this free pattern includes both written and charted instructions. The designer of this is Sue V. Crochet. So if I was going to do one of my very first crochet uh, shawls in a different weight yarn, I think I would try this one. A lot of people are intimidated by stitches like this. If you can uh, know your basic five crochet stitches, you can do this pattern. You just need to be able to read a crochet pattern or find a great crochet designer that'll help you step you through all these patterns. All these patterns are absolutely free. Let me click off these last two so I don't get lost. All right, our next pattern is called the Grand Mall Shaw. The wonderful design, uh, I've been drinking y'all, I'm trying to read. The wonderful design for this stunning shawl was released as a crochet along in 2018. There are five parts and each has a story about the inspiration for the pattern to go along with it. And this was made by a Lydia, a Lila Bajorn Crochet. This is beautiful. All right, I think we made it to our very third one. Okay. There's a lot of reading behind the scenes. Let me take a drink. Mm. I forgot to mention, if anybody donates via Super Chat, what Super Chat is, if you see a little dollar sign to this side of your screen, if you are on a mobile device, if you're on a, no, if you're on a desktop and a mobile device, you'll see the little dollar sign down below. When you click that, you help influencers like myself continue to come with more information and patterns that I always give absolutely free. And when you do, I usually have it set up automatically when these alerts go off, but my alert system is all backed up. But when you do donate, if you donate $4.99 and die, $4.99 and down, the disco light goes off. $9.99 and down, the balloons, the, the bubbles, and the disco light goes off. $10 and up, the balloons, the bubbles, and the disco light will all go off when you donate. Whew, that was a tongue twister. So let me go into the chat and see how you guys answered that last question. What was the last question? Oh, what type of, what shape of a shawl do you like to crochet? Let me see, scroll up. You guys be patient with me. Oh, 
Okay, for triangle, we have runaway needle says triangle and multi-point. Bunny also says triangle shape, fast and simple to finish. So this T is TDSMI prayer shawl. She prefers rectangle. Oh, all tongue twisters. Oh my goodness. Dawn says, I make a lot of prayer shawls for my church. Rectangle shapes works best for these purposes. One of the shawls I made, one was that kind of myself, was a triangle one. It's worked back and forth until it becomes like a big triangle, then it works back down. But the other one I made was also a simple back and forth uh, rectangle prayer, prayer shawl that I just tossed in different stitches to make. Oh, Brenda says that decoupage sunburst is gorgeous. Here we go. Gloria, I can't choose a favorite shape. I've made a lot of rectangle shaped shells, triangle shaped shawls, and asymmetrical shawls. I've got a few semicircles in my queue next. Those semicircle shawls are gorgeous. Uh, there's, I think I have another one that's going to be coming up that I'm going to tell you in the next couple shawls that are just beautiful where it kind of looks like you're a peacock like you're your own little bird cape or whatever that's a bad way of describing it it's this way you'll see all right dieta i like the two panel rectangle shawls and ponzo easy to make for different sizes i put a button on each side for closure halfway down that's beautiful Okay, anymore, and we'll hop right back in. Oh, here's something. Kim says, yes, I've used line brand yarn, and I thought it was just a bit thin than what I'm used to. That's what I'm intimidated by. I'm intimidated by that thin yarn. But when I look at all these beautiful shawls that I'm, like, featuring now that, like I said, nine inspired found, they are gorgeous. I'm like, I need them. And... I was probably going to mention this a little bit later, but I was inspired to make a shawl. I started binge watching. What's it called? Outlander. It's about this woman from the 1960s that gets uh, transported back in time to like the 1700s in Scotland or whatever. But regardless, they're wearing all these gorgeous shawls. And I'm like, oh, I need to make them. And the way they wear them are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Let's see. Anybody else I missed? Okay, one more. And I'll go right back into this. Patricia Happy Place. I love the thinner yarns for shawl. They drape. The drape is incredible. I'm going to do it. Oh, not Patricia. Patra. I'm sorry. I've just butchered your name. But I'm going to have to try that. Ah. Oh, any oh J Hook Crochet, she loves Outlander. I'm obsessed with period pieces. Like I'll my some of my crochet patterns are actually inspired by like period piece dramas that I watch on TV. Uh, another one of my favorite period pieces is, is my guilty pleasure. What's it called? Uh Downton Abbey. I don't know what it is about that uh passive aggressive drama where it to the layman eye, anybody watching this, it just looks stupid. But to me, I'm like sitting there biting my nails as they like properly yell at each other back and forth. But I have a hat inspired by uh, their 1920s style where it kind of goes over the eyes. Nice little cloche hat. But, uh, oh, Alonda, love Outlander. Team James Frazier. Yes. You know this? He's, he's a nice little weakness. He's a nice thing to look at. But this newer seasons, I don't know. I haven't gotten to the last one. It's not the same. I don't like the focus on a daughter so much. But if you haven't watched, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody. Okay, let me hop out of here. And we'll go into the next batch. Where did we leave off? We did that one. So now we are at... Oh, we didn't ask the last... Oh, I dropped my phone. I didn't last to ask last. No. And plus, I didn't even put it over the screen share. But guys, 
if you're ever going to be on a live screen, live screen, live chat, live anything, make sure you don't drink before. You get so forgetful. Hmm. Okay. The question before we go to our next video, not video, but pictures of shawls. When creating shawls, what's your favorite fiber? Do you, what favorite fiber do you recommend? Like uh, for the few I've done, I've like acrylic just because it's easy to wash, it's easy to take care of, and it's super cheap, especially if you're just selling at craft fairs and people don't know exactly what they're buying. Yes, but if you're making something for somebody in particular, what do you use? I mean, you can use anything other, other than uh, acrylic yarn. You can use uh, bamboo or some type of blend. I don't recommend anything like itchy, wooly. Wool's fine, but like an itchy wool, I don't recommend. Okay. And hmm. okay, so that was the question. Now I'm going to put up the screen share and take you back in. Here we go. We're going to look at the Starlet Shawl. This is from Yarn Inspiration. It says, add a little sparkle to your life with this shimmery shawl. The satin yarn recommended for this pattern is ridiculously soft and the sparkle really works up in a glam factor. And this shawl was created by Yarn Inspirations. You know what? I didn't plan on doing this, but I actually just made something with that yarn. Don't mind me. I'm just going to run two feet to the other side of the room so I can show you that sparkly yarn. That yarn is actually pretty gorgeous. I used it all up, so I can't show you like what I actually used for it. Ugh. Oh, my scarf thingy came down. You guys don't mind me. Oh, and if you like this scarf that I'm wearing, I have a tutorial for that. It is linked down in the description box. I put this on today because I did not feel like doing my hair and it looked cute with some hoop earrings. So if you like this pattern, is in a link down below? I didn't link this pattern, but I do have this. I guess if you type in crochet snowman pillow, it'll pop up. But the, are you able to see the sparkle of the yarn? This is the yarn that they recommend for that. And it is pretty soft. Can you see it? Gorgeous. So I just have to sit now. I made it like a month ago and it's not even anywhere near Christmas time. I was in a roundup for Christmas in July and this was my submission. Pop that over there. Back into the patterns. So that is a very cute pattern. We'll move on to pattern number eight. This one is called Cruise Control control shawl. This is one of the shawls that was similar to what I created in that back and forth row right here, where it just kept increasing to make the triangle. So on this pattern, you'll have to scroll down in the instructions to get the English version of this colorful shawl. Um, what else? Uh, this was made by, I hope I pronounced this right, Frost, here we go, Frost Kirka, Frost Kirka. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> okay. We'll move on to shawl number nine. This is called, this is gorgeous. Look at this. And the stitch is not complicated. I can imagine this one working up so fast. It's called the wild wheat shawl. Pick a yarn, any y'all. This crescent shawl can be made with any yarn you like. Use the recommended hook size for that yarn and start crocheting when you have as many rows as you would like. The designer made a whole bunch of um, prototypes for this one. So hop over to their post and use your color inspiration. This was made by Moho Moho Crochet, but they're Swedish. So I don't know if I'm probably pronouncing it uh, more Spanish. So Mojo, I don't know, but go over to their blog. It's absolutely gorgeous and it looks so simple. All right, so what I'm all leaning in because I was reading at the same time. That's why I'm so close to the camera. Sorry about that. Let me back up that you got to see my whole face. So um, what type of fiber do you like to did I ask that question? What type of fiber do you guys like to crochet with? Mm. Let's scroll up, see if I missed anybody. 
Oh, before I get back into that, I've seen some people that are big Downton Abbey's fans too. I love a good period piece. Okay. We have, here we go. We have 50 Whips Crochet Life. Yeah, I, I like your name. I've had 50 Whips in my crochet many times before, but oh, I missed it. It says, thanks to Dieta. I didn't mean to click yours. Everything is jumping around. Uh, Crafty Chat says, acrylic is all I can afford. The nice thing about acrylic, it comes in so many different colors and is quite affordable. And sometimes when you give things to people, they don't um, adhere to like the recommendations. I might say, please, this is uh, wool. Do not push this in the washing machine or acrylic is safe or if they want to mishandle it, that's the best bet. I like to think so. Teresa says, I usually use acrylic, but I love uh, superwash wool. There we go. Kathleen says, wool acrylic blend and cotton blends are so soft. What type of cotton yarn do you use if you're making a shawl? I've used the 24, I think for a shawl, if you're going to do a cotton one, I like the, who makes the 24-7 cotton? I can't remember. Is it Line Brand 24 or Burnett's 24-7 cotton? The way that the yarn is made, it's not like uh, Burnett's. It's not like this cotton. It looks, I wish I had some around, but the way it is, it's not plied. It's not spun like this. It's like it's a little netted tube created, and it doesn't separate when you crochet. I think that would make it absolutely gorgeous, Trace. And it has like a mercerized texture to it. So it kind of has a luster to it, if that makes sense. Patrick says, Alicia, I need to find all kinds of ways to wear a shawl. Many ladies don't like shawls because they look old. I know. But like I said, back to the Outlanders, that's what got me like, shawls are cute. And I'm starting to see it pop up in fashion. But the way that they would tie their shawls didn't look like the granny style shawls. They tucked them in such a way where the shawl almost looked like a top. And I was just studying them and looking. They were mostly knitted on that show. But I can't knit for the life of me. But you can crochet a shawl also. Okay. Let me scroll up. Sometimes it's so hard for me to take uh, your comment back off. I go to click on it. And then my comment section kind of scrolls. Okay. Uh, hmm, Kiana or Kana? Kina. I don't know. I mispronounced your name. I'm sorry. But Lion Brand Comfy Cotton. I've, I have tried that. See, I wish I would have had some like uh, textures of yarn just laying around so I can just grab it and show you all these recommendations that people are offering. As you can see, this section right here is just a little bit of the yarn I have. I have a lot of yarn. Oh, David says, I love uh, British historical TV, but have never uh, really warmed up the Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey is something you have to get like three episodes in. Once you get three episodes in, it hooks you. My girlfriend told me about Downton Abbey for years. I was watching, the, I watched the first episode maybe like three times and I just couldn't do it. She's like, you just got to hold on, make it through three episodes and all of a sudden you can't get enough. I even went to the movies to watch the movie uh, with her. We, we all snuck in our little tiny little containers of wine and we were drinking during the movie and just cracking up. Love it. I, my favorite character is the grandma. She is so like lethal with her words. Like I said, that passive aggressiveness. Love it. All right. Oh, here we go. Kathleen, Kaboo Cotton Bamboo and Cotton Fair are my favorites. I have Kaboo. That is a gorgeous yarn. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to try to grab it and not break everything in my house. Oh, this is the basket that sits on my shelf. Where's my Kaboo, y'all? 
I know this is probably not a good place to keep it. I swear it was in here. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe I was smart enough to move it out of my junk box and put it. Yeah, I did. It's not in here. Oh, that's big. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> Kathleen Kaboo is a beautiful yarn. I never thought about making a shawl with it. I have three hanks of it that I, I just don't know what to do. Good day says, I want to get into shawls, but I don't know how to wear it with grace, um, especially on a larger frame. Guys, how are you guys wearing your shawls? Let us know. Teach us how to make it look cool because these shawls that I'm looking at and showing you are absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to try one of the less, note the last one, that wheat shawl. I said I was going to do the one before that, but I think that wheat shawl looks like it'll work up a lot quicker. But yeah, how would I wear that to make that still look cool? Not cool, but you know, I don't want to look like a grandma. I want to look like a cool mom of older children. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so we're going to hop back into the next spot. Mm. Uh, what was my question? I didn't ask the next question. Okay, I did that one. We did this one. Did I ask about the fiber? Oh, this I already asked the question. How do you guys wear your shawls? That was a question. And you guys already asked it for me. But like I was speaking about on that show, Out Outlanders or any type, of, the way they wear it is gorgeous. How do you guys wear yours? Tell me. All right. Now we're going to hop back into the last few shawls that we have. Okay. Here we go. This one is our number 10 called Afternoon with Anna Prayer Shawl. I've never seen a lace design quite like this one before. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. This unique wrap was designed to comfort a dear friend coping with the loss of her husband. All right, this is an inspiring gift. This was made by Mo Crochet. I absolutely love this stitch. When got not, I've never done this stitch, but I love the look of this stitch. Don't be intimidated. I wish, can I zoom this in? For those intimidated by crochet uh, stitches like this that look so intricate, look at it by one by run. I mean, row by row, you'll see there's like five double crochet here. Then you'll see, uh, what is this? Am I looking at the upside down? Either that's a double crochet two together or a chain stitch. No, this is probably like a chain five. And then you skip some stitch, double crochet, chain five. You can do this. Just if you have a good pattern to follow, you can make anything. People are stuck on uh, beginning crochet patterns forever. Don't be stuck. Give something new a try. All right. So um, let me get off my soapbox. This one is the one I was talking about where, let me scroll down, number 11, Birds of Paradise Shaw. That looks like maybe like an angel's wing or like uh, actually feathers from a bird that will be draped around your neck. This is, can I zoom in on it bigger? Look at this. It's so gorgeous. Is it the yarn that makes it even better? That ombre, that layered effect that it's giving? Oh, it's like tiny little shells mashed together in chain stitches. I usually stick to simple patterns where I can blank out and just zone and crochet and watch TV. But I can see this picture. I have to keep track of all my stitches. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I didn't even read what it's about. I'm just babbling on about it. All right, you will learn a bunch of uh, new stitch combinations for gorgeous lace designs with this stunning shawl. I love all the different colors and texture. The neck opening was designed to be a little smaller than a traditional shawl to keep it from falling off your shoulders. Uh, oh, and this was made by, uh, did we already do this one? Suvi's Crochet. Oh, we have, actually we had two patterns from her. All right, so let's move on to the next one. That is gorgeous. Okay, I can't stop looking at all those colors. And number 12, Flower Puff Shawl. 
This beautiful shawl was one of my favorites because uh, it has tassels and textures. The design features both written and video instruction. You know, guys, I'm a big fan of written patterns and video instructions. When people are claim that found me through my blog on my written patterns, they're like, I'm stuck. I'm like, that's cool. I got the pattern on video to go along with it. You can't get lost. So if you want to try like a more intricate pattern, give this one a try because it comes with a video tutorial. And the designer of this is from Will Made. Let me back away from the screen. All right. Oh, we have some question marks. After I go over these next questions, I'm going to need some more of your help to help me pick more uh, video topics that we can talk about every week on my live stream. I sent one of those questionnaires out, but I'll get back to that in a minute. So you guys that haven't answered questions, think about some topics that we can go over during our uh, next few live streams that we're going to have. Okay, Crochet Chick says, I love all shawl types, but the only one that looks nice on me are the asymmetrical shawls. I bet you look cute more than just that. <laughs> do, do, do. Wendy said, the Birds of Paradise shawl is gorgeous. I know, it looks like you have like a beautiful bird cape on there. <laughs> oh, Crafty Chat says, wow, that color work is uh, scary. Do you think it's the color work or how the yarn works up? If I have to layer colors together, I can't do it if my life depended on it. Every time I go to create a pattern that needs some type of color working, I have to ask my daughter or my husband or I have this one little device I use. I don't think I have it sitting around. I I'm color incompetent. I can't match. I can't. I have to Google complementary colors all the time. Eh. Here we go. Laura says, blessed in it. I'm guessing how you uh, would wear your shawl. Blessed in the chest, so tie the front. <laughs> She's blessed in the chest, so she ties in the front, just makes them look even more blessed. <laughs> Here we go. From Mary. Also, if you do the semicircle ones, wear it like a jacket or let it drape um, gone with uh, gone with the wind style from uh, your elbows. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Where it just let me pull this down. It's off the back and it's just laying across your arm like that. Gone with the wind style. Fun fact, not fun fact. The woman uh, that was a star in that uh, movie. What was her name? Olivia de Boo something French sounding. She just passed away. She was 104 years old. She just passed away a couple days ago. That's not a fun fact, fact just you, information I have in my head. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's one. Alanda, for some reason, the video tutorial works better for me. I find it hard to read a pattern but I only been crocheting for less than a year. You know what? I did not follow patterns for years. I would just wing things. And when I was winging things, there was no YouTube tutorials to wing things with. I was just making funny shaped things. The more I made it, the better shape it became. But then once I took the time to learn how to read a pattern, I learned how to create more, if that makes sense. Because crochet designers do things mathematically correct. To create a circle, there's a mathematical pattern that you do. To create a shell stitch, there's a mathematical amount of stitches and amount of chains. Once you do so many patterns doing all these, you learn how to create all these shapes on your own. It's like the knowledge gets stored in your head. And then I was able to create my own patterns. Random. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there we go. Somebody, Frida. 
Olivia de Havlin. Yes, that is her name. She was in Gone with the Wind. She was, I forget her role in a movie, but 104 years old, just passed away. You get like an extra mental bonus point for that one. Oh, and also, if you are just joining me, uh, let me put, if you're just joining me and if you donated via a super chat last week, and did not receive your graph GAN patterns, please email me at littlejohnyarns at gmail.com. My email address is down in the description box below so I can still get you your uh, patterns. Here we go. J-hook crochet. Um, if you make a trapezoid shaped shawl, cross it in the front and tie the ends in the back and it looks like a top. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. The trapezoid, you know, but it just goes across your top just like this in the back. I don't want to stand up too much because today is a uh, Saturday and it's a lazy day and I'm actually in my pajamas right now. So my pajamas and my head wrap and I'm just chatting with you guys today. So I'm not going to stand up so you can see the rest of my jammies. Hmm. Mm. This is Deanna. Oh, excellent. Deanna, video topic, how to wash different types of yarn. That is an excellent one. You know what? Bananas. I'm just going to have to scroll back. I didn't bring my pencil or nothing. I'm going to try to remember this or go back through the chat. What minute are we on? 40 minutes, so I can scroll through there. Mary, bigger girls can find any drape that makes it look asymmetrical. One end on the shoulder, on the elbow, and wear it like a shoulder poncho. Oh, I got you one end there on the shoulder at the elbow. Here we go. Another one from Dieta. Thank you. You're keeping this chat alive. Uh, video topic, uh, tutorials on different type of stitches. Excellent. You know what? I just learned how to use two cameras to do during a live so I can actually have my camera here and a camera on my hand and maybe we can go through stitches. And I also wanted to do a, I forgot one, crochet, uh, what are they called? Specialty yarns or are they called specialty yarns? Like yarns that you don't know what to do with. Actually, I would consider this like one of those type of yarns. I have a ton of yarns that are furry or lumpy or boucle or am I pronouncing that right? But I have absolutely no clue to do it. That's why you're seeing all these sitting behind me. I don't know what to create. This yarn I absolutely love and is my downfall. I, I don't want to make a blanket out of it. I probably will. Let me uh, remove this topic. Where are you? There it is. I don't know what to make it. It reminds me of blanket yarn, but it's thin. See, I was like a flat ribbon of blanket yarn. Don't know what to make with it. All right, let me hop back into the chat. Ooh, Brittany. She says, Brittany says topic idea. You should do a live on creating crochet patterns. This one I get all the time. Cr creating crochet patterns is something you almost have to learn on your own. Remember how, if you were just joining me, a couple minutes ago I was talking about before I learned how to read a pattern or before YouTube ever existed, I was imagining shapes on my own. I didn't understand. You have to understand the mechanics of crochet. Let's take a spiral. To crochet a spiral, let's say you chain 20 stitches. To make a spiral, you would put three stitches in each stitch. If you don't understand patterns, that might be mind boggling to you that you realize when you place three stitches in each stitch, it'll make your pattern go in a spiral. These are things that you have to pick on your pick up on your own by trying other people's patterns. That same shape as in if you want to go around a corner of a blanket, you need three stitches, let's say one, two, three, to get around the corner. You have to pick up that. I just can't, I guess I did kind of just teach you that, but I can't even imagine how to make that in a cohesive 
tutorial. I'm going to have to research and find you guys an excellent pattern creator. I've been trying to, I love having people to interview on my live stream. It's been so much fun, especially my last live stream when I did with Shanna, Shauna. It was just exciting being able to banter with somebody. So if I can find somebody to interview and bring on for this live stream, or do you guys know somebody who actually does this that would want to share their information with us that I can bring on a live stream? Let me know. Email me. Uh, video topic, project projects for Pride Month. Wasn't Pride Month uh, the month before? We're a little bit late. I believe so. But sure, I can make uh, projects for Pride. Why not? Here we go. Actually, I have a crochet tutorial on a cute little rainbow sweater. It is my oversized, what was Pride Month? Wasn't that June? Yeah, yeah uh, Pride Month was June. Okay, but I do have a cute little sweater with the rainbow up top. Oh, yay. My daughter's going to grab it for me. Be patient with me. There it is. Thank you, baby doll. It has a little paper thing on it. That's okay. My camera's not. What, it does have something. What's that fuzzy on it? I can't see it. It's on the other side. Yep. There we go. Ooh, it smells like perfume. But I'm sorry, I'm sniffing her sweater. But here it is right here. Sweater made for my daughter. Let's see. I can probably bring it up here. Let's see. Come on, Internet. We'll Google it. Over size crochet. No, it's bat wing sweater. Bat. Wing, I can't spell sweater. Let's see how well I rank. Who? There I am, right there. That is the sweater that. Let me pull my finger off. That is, you know, rainbow style and super cute. There we go. We have another one from Robin. Video topic: How to block with different yarns. That is a good one. I do have a tutorial on how to block. I actually have one of my favorite crochet tips. It's not exactly blocking. It's not blocking at all. You ever heard of, it just let me into it. You ever heard of killing fiber, um, killing the fabric? When I work with acrylic yarn, or I usually recommend to this, somebody who, uh, let's say, did one of my uh, hats or whatever, and it came out a little bit too small, and they don't want to have to frog the whole pattern or such as a baby hat, you can kill the fabric. What I do, if it's acrylic yarn, I take a damp cloth, like a towel or whatever, lay it on top of the hat. Take an iron, gently steam, and it'll kill the fabric, but you have to be careful. If you mess up and overstretch the fabric, it'll never go back. <laughs> so be very careful with this, but that's one of my favorite things to do. And also one of my favorite is not blocking, but it's kind of making the fabric lay flat. I have a, it's a circular knitting machine. Let me pull this down. Get the sweater out the way. I bring it out every single week and I never remember to just keep it out. A circular knitting machine. When you make a stockinettes, knit stockinettes, they tend to roll at the side. So I get a little lazy sometimes. I will wet my whole thing and hit it with the hair dryer to fix those edges if I don't feel like, you know, messing with it too much. All right, let's see. Christine says, would you be interested in fillet Am I pronouncing this right? Filet crochet as a topic. You know what? I've, I've never, I haven't really done it. I don't want to come off as the crochet know all, know it all lady, but I've never done it before. But I do you know what? I would write a blog post about it. This is how I research and learn more about topics. Let's say you give me this topic. 
I will research all week. I will do a blog post about it, learn everything I need to learn about it. And usually that's how my, uh, these live streams come out. And I end up with all this information in my brain. And on Saturdays, I verbally spill it all to you. So I think that can be a topic. And plus, it'll be a teaching moment for myself also. Here we go. Oh, I lost some. Christine, video topic, fillet crochet, but yarn, not thread. Oh, yeah, because, you know, I only work with thread if I'm doing uh, jewelry. That's it. Oh, Ava says, I'm, I'm so new to crocheting. I'm lost here. Listen, it's okay. Learn your first five basic stitches, honey. You got to learn your chain, your single crochet, your half double crochet, and your double crochet. What's another one? Slip stitch. I mean, you can go on to treble, but don't think about those now. Learn those five stitches. And with those five stitches, you will be so amazed. People will go on to be a beginner for months, for years. I was a beginner for like 30 years of my life just wouldn't move on to anything more complicated. I currently know her name is her YouTube channel and her blog is Orchard and Bees. She has been crocheting for exactly a year. She already has a YouTube channel. She already creates and sells patterns with the knowledge that she's only garnered in only a year. Don't worry. Learn those first five stitches and you'll be amazed. You got this. Everybody, where's my cup? Everybody give Ava a cheers. Thank you so much for being new to crochet. Okay. Deanna says, Alicia, is there any, any way you could repost the live chat posts for reference? No. But luckily, now that I'm able to like bring as you can see your things right there i'm able to bring those to the front i can fast forward to the video and see when those pop up so i'm able to probably do that it'll be easier <gasps> here we go great information from karen okay selena baka baka founder uh american crochet association they have a course on crochet pattern writing and much more I've actually heard about that. You know, even though I already uh, create patterns and I should take her course. Why not? I should, it can fine tune my pattern making. I actually took the course for to become a crochet instructor. I never finished it. I just couldn't find the time to finish the course and continue with my blog and continue to YouTube and creating patterns. It was, I was putting too much on my plate, but going through the course itself, I learned so much about crochet that I didn't even know. I didn't know if that makes sense. It like fine tune my crochet technique. So if the crochet writing course can fine tune the way I write, I, I should definitely do that. And know what? Why not take it to learn how to read a pattern? I think that would make sense. When people want to learn how to read a pattern, I always recommend say the pattern out loud. Of course, you got to learn what the uh, SC stands for single crochet. DC stands. You got to learn what your symbol stand for or whatever it's called stands for. And just say it out loud and you can read a pattern when it says two DC comma SC in next five stitches. You do two double crochet in one stitch. Then you single crochet in the next seven stitches. Just say it out loud. You're smarter than you know. Here we go. Hook size and different brand names. Usually right on, that's a good one. Usually right on the back, 
it tells you what their hook size is. But I have varied from their recommended hook size depending on what I wanted to make and how tight I wanted to stitch. What peeves me the most is red heart yarn. Red heart yarn is not consistently the same size throughout colors. Excuse me. If you know red heart uh, yellow is like a thin yarn. I don't have any of my red heart yarns next to me. It's a thinner, flexible yarn. And if you know red heart red is like a thick, coarse cord of a yarn. Like I can go up to a 5.5 for the thick red and I can drop down to like a four something for that uh, four or five for the uh, yellow color. That's what annoys me about a uh, red heart yarn. Have any of you guys noticed like the different yarn variations? I've not noticed that with any other yarn brand, only red heart. If I'm using, uh, this was a discontinued yarn, but this is the fantasy dark horse yarn from their variegated to their purple. Their yarn strand is exactly the same. If I'm using any of premier yarn, certain yarn size, exactly the same within the color range. It's annoying. Let's see what else is in the comments. Here we go. Teresa says, the crochet crowd does videos from free patterns that might help you learn to read patterns. Definitely. Go to anybody that does a YouTube tutorial and writes their written patterns for free. You can work along with it. My patterns within the past, I, all my patterns come with a free tutorial. I mean, a free written pattern. But my patterns specifically follow the, exactly the way I write my patterns. So my new crochet uh, shoes that I just created, they're like loafers. These ones, they're written exactly, I can't you see them. It looks ugly with my uh, hand in it. It looks cuter with a foot in it. You can just Google crochet slipper loafers. You'll find it. I've been drinking. What am I talking about? Mm. you'll be able to follow along exactly. So don't be afraid. Okay, let me remove this one. Mm. There are some great reference guys on Pinterest that tell you what symbols mean and even what they would look like in a chart. Ooh, Lynetta, thank you. How about... Uh, live chat how how to read a crochet chart i would you know it that's something that's definitely doable i wish i had my pencil so i'm gonna have to scroll through all of these to figure out what my live chat's gonna be maybe that can be for a uh, next live stream mm. okay Arlise says i made a whole afghan knowing only two stitches chain and single crochet the yarn was blue ombre, which is what saved my sanity. You know what? Look, you can make, know what? She knew two stitches. Those same two stitches could have made a sweater. Because you made, if you can make a square, you can make a sweater. Put them both together. That's all you need to know. You can make anything. And to make it more exciting, exact, exactly what she said, she used some ombre, ombre yarn, which would break up the boring monotony of whatever you're making. Just switch yarns or have a beautiful like ombre yarn and make whatever you want. Good day. Video topic. Small crochet projects when it's too hot to crochet. <gasps> yeah. You know what? Listen, I am the queen of short crochet projects. I see all these YouTube uh, crochet people making these intricate tops and these, like I said, lace work. And it seems like they're coming out with videos nonstop. And I'm over here making uh, head scarves and purse and hats and stuff that's quick. I get bored and my hands start to hurt. I crochet a lot. If I'm going to do something so huge, I can't. Like you said, if it's a blanket, it's too hot to be having a blanket just piling up over your lap. You want that quick, quick something. Hmm. So 
if you like, if you're subscribed, if you're not, make sure that you do. I just came out with uh, these um, crochet loafers and I just created, they're going to be published on Monday, these crochet flip flops. You know, most of these crochet flip flops are made with uh, t-shirt yarn, but you know what? <coughs> Excuse me. You don't have like t-shirt yarn in your uh, craft room. Fume craft room like I do. This is made with worsted weight yarn. I created mine using cotton yarn, two strands of cotton yarn together, but you can use two strands of acrylic yarn. It's up to you. And you can create these crochet flip flops. And if you do want to use t-shirt yarn, I'm sure you can just substitute not holding two strands together and use some t-shirt yarn. You get an amen, Robin, you're right. Red Heart is the worst for having multiple sizes or multiple weights for just one skein of yarn. I don't know why they do that. They have such beautiful colors, but they're very consistent. If you have ombre heart yarn, they're all pretty much the same thickness. Yellow yarn and their ombre yarn are exactly the same thickness. Their red, their fox, and orange, they're all different levels of color. I don't know. I was trying, I was seeing the um, colors of yarn in my head and their thickness. I crochet, crochet so much, I can see the shapes of yarn. Wendy, do you prefer to crochet with the skein? or skein, skein, or do you cake the yarn? I would, however yarn comes, I'm cheap. I usually buy my yarn that already looks like this. I find the middle and pull it out. But sometimes I keep, I've learned how, which direction the yarn should be in on which side. But if I pull the wrong side and start to see it's the beginnings of like yarn vomit, I stop. Oh, I'm going to mess up my pretty decorative yarn over here. Let me jack up some yarn that's not as pretty. Here we go. It's just not the... Here we go. There we go. Nobody's looking at yet. This is my decorative wall. And let's say I can't get the right yarn and it starts to get a little bit of yarn vomit. This thing right here. This works for cakes, too. You can just put your cake right on. If you're not pulling your cake from the center, you can put your cake on here and pull from the outside. If I mess up my pull, I just put it on here and this is poorly put together, but you catch my drift and I'm able and it spins. I'm just causing horror down below, not paying attention. It's okay because it comes off like this. It won't get stuck and ruined. This is called a, oh guys, you got to help me out. What is this called? Yarn winder. It's not a yarn winder. I don't know, but get one of these. I don't mind what I use my yarn from a cake or from a uh, skein. It's fine with me, however it comes. What I need to buy is a hank winder. I have these beautiful yarn somebody asked winner asked like hey if i win would you be able to uh wind the these into cakes because i don't have a hank i don't have a hank either i need to stop being cheap and go buy me one go my yarn winder so i can just cake stuff up but i usually use my wine yarn winder to cake up cake cake up my wasted yarn my scrap yarn that's what i do okay Here we go. From David, lots of written patterns are clear as mud. <laughs> My observation is that those who do tutorials and demos have better patterns. Are you hinting I do good patterns? Thanks, David. <laughs> okay. This one is from Good Day Video Topic, polyester yarn. I saw a huge sale at Michael's for polyester yarn. Very soft. What is polyester yarn, guys? 
Okay, field trip. Google. Oh, Lord, I can't spell polyester. That's okay. Polyester yarn. According to yarn.com. That's nice. Oh, okay. It's nothing fancy. Were you thinking of a specific, like, uh, yarn brand? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Deanna said, this is a paper towel holder. Yes. You, you are right. I bought this for $11.99. I'm sure a paper towel holder would be a lot cheaper. Okay, good day. I, I'm not even realize I keep clicking on your stuff, but you're coming up with good topics. I'm lining hats for winter. I have never lined a hat for winter, but you know what? I've seen a lot of people go to their local uh, dollar store, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, whatever type of dollar, whatever that you have. You ever see those little satin bonnets? I wear the satin bonnets to go to sleep in at night. You can buy those for a dollar. And they would just sew it into the lining of their hats, so and pop right on. Okay, Gigi the Crochet Queen says, I think like uh, butter has polyester. Hmm, I have to try them out. <laughs> Victoria Price field trip. We have another user of the paper towel holder. I'm going to butcher your name. Kiana, is that right? I use paper towel holders. I'm just ruining this. Usually, guys, if you notice, I usually have like my wine box down behind me. This is my last glass of wine. I have to go to like the store and get me some after my live stream so I can enjoy the rest of my Saturday. My husband laughs at me every live after a live stream. Usually, he works at the shop on a weekend. He likes to cook foods. He works in a restaurant. He's the chef and he sells his foods, all that wonderful stuff. But by the time he comes home and that's when my live stream's done, I am so sauced. But this is good today because today during this whole live stream, I've only had one cup. So I'm good today. I'm a good girl. From Mary, topic, lining purses or crocheting a purse that can actually hold weight and not stretch too much. Uh, that is one of my biggest peeves. The trick to getting around that is the strap. Yes, the bag is going to stretch and the lining will help. But when you create your strap, stick to only single crochets. I created this one strap. It's not even I created it. But let me pull your topic down. For any strap, change it out for this one. Create a long chain single crochet across the first part then flip the chain over we're not going to chain one and work at the top we're going to flip the chain over and single crochet along that very same stitch the underneath of your stitches do maybe two rows then two rows and after you have that you're going to do one more i wish i um, i do have a purse i'm going to pull it up and put in the link down below and after you do that, that track across the middle, you're going to do a running slip stitch. Okay, we're going to have to go on a field trip. Here we go, guys. It's so hard to explain. Uh, crochet Granny's Wear Purse. I'm probably not even on the front page for this. Nope. There we go. Little, can't spell my name. John Giarn. There we go. Building your this purse handle will and never and slip. When it's ready for the world to see, that's how to make this crochet mess fast. If you find this video move too fast, look to the bottom right hand like so far. Let's see if I can wind this a little bit so you can see it better. Okay. As you can see, I originally started out with a chain. Imagine this wasn't there. This 
yellow tan part. I made a chain. I single crocheted on the top of the chain and underneath the chain. And in the spaces in between, between, I did a running slip stitch. This will not stretch and like ruin your shoulder. Let's see if I can show you the running slip stitch. We're gonna place one single crochet. Okay. You see it? This is what it looks like so far. So right now we have the base of our single crochet like this and your chain stitch will be in the middle of your work. Now we're gonna add this little pretty uh, detail going down the center of your purse strap. In order to do that, I'm gonna skip along. We're working into those little holes. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the very first one. I'm gonna zoom in so you can be able to see better. Slip stitch. There we go. Next space, little hole right here. Go in. Pull up a loop. This simple act of doing this running slip stitch down the Go middle the of your um, purse handle stops that stretch. There we go. So, yeah, good one. Ooh, here we go. Langston Hughes. <laughs> Video topic, crochet jewelry or Tunisian crochet? Ooh, maybe we can bring back Shauna for Tunisian crochet. I am not a Tunisian crocheter. If you guys know me, I like the big fat stitches. It's just what I like to do. <laughs> All right. Your crossbody um, pattern shows how to do that strap. Yep, see, you're hitting me. Uh, Crafty Chat Cafe says, wow, nice technique skills. I am so basic, it's unreal. You know what? That crochet technique is something I, did I learn that from somebody else? No. I think that one, I've learned how to do running crochet stitches from other people, um, of course. But I think that, I don't know if I did that or I don't know if it was Inception, who knows. But it's simple stitches, single crochet, that's all. Janice says, I love that handle idea. Oh, thank you. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. If you guys enjoyed watching this live stream, please make sure you come back next week. Uh, I'm always here, Saturdays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come back. What I would like to do is create a calendar for you guys so you always know what's coming up for your live stream. I always try to make sure my live streams are informative and I'm not just talking about the cat or dogs that I have in the house, which I actually don't have any cats or dogs in the house, but I just want to be informative and not bore you just with me. All right, guys, I'll see you all on the very next live stream next Saturday and look out for my brand new tutorial on Monday. See you guys.